If you look back at video 83 in the game engine programming playlist, you'll see the whole motivation to why we're writing the profiler. That is because I want to optimize this matrix 3D. I notice we don't necessarily need the bottom row of the matrix 3D. We don't need to in incorporate it into our uh, calculations. Remember that the bottom two left values are zeros, the other one's always a one. So why bother with that? Let's just make some assumptions there. And that means I'm going to make another matrix class that no longer, it, first of all, it will be smaller in size. It will be uh, three floats smaller than uh, uh, this version we have here. And then it will also run slightly faster because it will not do um, needless calculations. And my hope was to use the profiler to detect how much time we gain. To be honest, I don't think we are going to gain that much time. In fact, I, I might, I wouldn't be surprised if we couldn't even measure the amount of time because it's such a simple, we're not doing anything, any heavy lifting here. We make a matrix and multiply it against a few verts. And, and if you remember when we did our clock class and we measured time, uh, we use the high performance counter, but it's not as granular. It's much more granular than milliseconds for sure, which is a benefit, but it is not as granular as having, um, the actual clock cycles. It's, it's, I think that we were too high by a thousand, if I remember right. Anyway, we may see some results. We may not. Who knows? But in the meantime, uh, we need to use that to at least try to use it here and see if we can gain any speed. And so we need to, first of all, start profiling this. Well, how are we going to do such? Control Home. First thing we need to do is include the Profiler and profiler ends with P. These are all my engine includes, so I'm going to pound include debug tool slash profiling slash profiler. Uh, like so. And you may be asking me, I actually thought about it, I'm like, why did I include a subfolder for that? Well, we're about to see why. Uh, right here, first of all, we need to initialize it, right? So where should we initialize? Initialize GL. This is where we do all the GL initialization. But if I remember right, did we do initialize here? Yeah. So my GL window, we actually have an explicit initialize function that I call. And right now we just say, hey, clock initialize. But now we need to initialize these static singleton profilers. So what I'm going to do is say profiler dot initialize. Right? And we need to pass the file name in here, which, I don't know, call it profiles. Dot CSV. Hopefully in the near future I'll show you how to do configuration in your game so that we don't have to hard code this here. Obviously if I hard code this and I want to change it, now I have to do a build and our build times are going to get longer and longer just to change one thing and so ideally we do a configuration file and I think I actually might end up using Lua to do our configuration. At some point we need to incorporate Lua into our game. Notice though initialize I set that up uh, to return void, right? I can't check a boolean return value, right? And and pass that boolean on up. Why did I set it up to return void? If you remember, I'm trying to get the all the profiler call sites to vaporize, um, and so they they must return void in order for this to to work. So what if initialize fails? Well, how are we going to note that? Well, we would use an assert in the profiler. If I go back to the engine and to debug tools, profiling, if we go to the initialize, where is initialize? Right here. Um, if, there, if we were doing something here that could potentially fail, I would assert and bomb the program right here. Unless I know I could just move on. And then I would just log an error, but we don't have a logging system yet. That's another debug set of tools we need to set up. We need to set up an assertion system and a logging system. Hence, we need to make a debug project and pull this stuff out of our engine. Uh, but that's future videos. So anyway, that's what I'm just saying is, hey, we're returning void. We can't return a return code or a Boolean or something. Uh, we would just assert and bomb here. So we initialize the profiler and... Then we initialize the clock. I'm going to actually make a boolean here. Just to bool ret gets true. We're going to assume everything is good here. And then I'm going to say ret or, is it or? No, it's and. And equals clock initialize. So if clock initialize returns true, then ret will be true. And true and true will still be true. We're good to go. But 
if clock.initialize returns false and we end that with true then we'll, ret will be false and then I will just say return ret. Now why am I using this lame syntax? Well, what if I want to initialize other systems? You know, here's another good question. And something to think about, and I just was tempted to go edit the video and take everything out that I just did, but uh, I think we actually should go forward. The clock dot initialize. If clock dot initialize fails for some reason, then chances are our game clock's going to bite, and the whole game's going to not work out very correctly, and that sort of thing. So I could, once we do build our own assert, I could assert ret or log an error. I could bomb the program here. I can say, if not ret, then log an issue, don't, even though we don't have a log. Oh, that's the mathematical log. <laughs> anyway, log an issue. Uh, got a crash, got a something. All right, and then we could just call the crash function, whatever that's going to be. Um, do we want to move on? Well, if the clock doesn't initialize, chances are we don't want to move on. But say that profiler did return a Boolean, just for an example, and I and equal that, well, if that fails, if the profiler fails, can the game go on? Well, yes, yeah, certainly it can go on. The profiler's not going to do its job correctly, but the game can go on. So in that case, we don't want to crash. So all these ifs, ands, and gotchas. So in some cases, we do want to crash. In some cases, we don't. Well, in the shutdown, we want to be sure that even though something may shut down incorrectly or fail to shut down, we want to shut down everything. All right? And... And, and then that brings up another question. Well, what if profiler fails to initialize, but then you say profiler.shutdown? Well, this is a design decision, an architectural decision. The decision I'm going to go with is if you fail to initialize properly, calling shutdown on you sh shouldn't do anything. If, if I can't turn the switch on, but I try to turn the switch off, the switch should be off. And that's just my own architectural decision. But in that case, this boolean is nice because then I can say, well, bool ret gets true. And if shutdown returns something, I say ret and equals with that. And ret and equals with that. And I'm just going to, one by one, I'm going to shut down all my systems. Say these are several different kind of systems like AI and physics and who knows what. I want to be sure they all shut down. But in the end, I know ret will be false if one of these failed to shut down correctly. All right, key concept there. Ret will be false if one of these shuts down incorrectly. And then I can return ret back to whoever called shutdown on the GL window. And if they want to react to the fact that something failed, that's, that's up to them. Anyway, long lesson. Maybe a little bit too wordy of a tangent. Sorry if that was not useful. OK, we got to initialize. we got to shut down. And the next thing we want to do is actually use our profiler. And right here is where I want to use the profiler when I say, hey, um, first of all, I want to profile. Is multiplying a matrix any faster without having to do the bottom row? A matrix with a matrix? Is that any faster? And then is multiplying the matrices against all of our verts, how much time do we save there? Now, again, we're only doing three verts. And this is only one matrix multiplication. And chances are we won't m be able to measure it even. It's it's too granular. But we'll soon do particles and measuring particles. Uh, we definitely can measure those kind of times because particles, we get lots of particles, and that takes up lots of processing time. So how are we going to uh, measure this? All right, Our profiler, the way we set it up, as we say profiler dot uh, add entry, and the entry I want to add, I, I, I want to time this somehow. And in, in profiler add entry, I want to say matrix multiply. We're we're multiplying a matrix, and it took how much time? Well, how are we going to get the amount of time to put here? Well, didn't we build a clock somewhere in timing? We built this clock thing. We could use this. This clock thing is good at keeping time, but I b believe we built it specifically uh, to track frames one by one. All right, so yeah, we do use this clock. If you remember, we did all those videos, and every time we get an update, wherever the update is, can I say clock dot new frame? Where is that? All oh, right here, clock dot new frame. 
So we built this clock just to keep track of frames, but it's not really a general purpose clock to do timings like we uh, like I want to do with the the profiling here, wherever I put it at. Profiler add entry. I can't say clock dot time last whatever. I can't say time last frame or delta timer. That's that's a frame. That's not I, I just want to profile this one line of code. So how are we going to do that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.